Hey y'all, long time no talk. It is Megan here. If you're new to the channel, I live in zone 8B, Dothan, Alabama, southeast corner of the state. I just opened up a garden nursery in June, so I'm, I've been completely covered up, um, which is a good thing. We're very thankful, but we've been very busy, so I haven't been posting any videos. I hope that you'll um, enjoy this video. This is kind of a big video. It's an update on something that we've done. Me and John have redesigned the bed off of my driveway at my home. Um, actually, I can't really take any credit. John and I met over here and we did kind of collaborate, but he came up with a lot of the design for this bed right off my driveway. Okay, so starting at the street over here, we have a long strip of natural area that's got pine straw and a lot of pine trees in it that separates my house from my parents' house because we moved into the house next door to mom and dad two years ago in September of 21. And so since then, I have really been trying my hardest to kind of get the landscape just to feel like my own. I came from a little cottage garden over in another neighborhood in our town. And so it was a real learning curve trying to navigate a huge landscape compared to what I did have and a different um, aesthetic because this is a lot more traditional. And it does extend all the way down. And then you see that lawn there, that's my parents. And so from there all the way here and to the back, the back is the golf course and then there's a cart path and our natural area goes all the way back to the other side. So this is west facing over here. And so we'll start with the biggest thing and my favorite thing that we put in the side bed and that is the river birch. This was a 45 gallon river birch tree. So it's gonna eventually take up most of the sky space because it'll get about 40 feet wide and probably about 60 feet tall and they are fast growers, but I think they're beautiful, beautiful trees. And the thing I love really the most is that they are kind of like a light canopy. They aren't super dense. And so all these plants under here will get dappled sun and I think it's gonna be beautiful. And they're also very airy. Like you can see that they're, they're not super stiff like some trees. And I just think it really adds so much over here to the side. Now, in the back ground of the bed, at 45 degree angles, those are recurve of folium. So that is Ligustrum recurve, and it has a really pretty glossy, smaller leaf than the wax Ligustrum does, and the leaf is sort of curly. That's why they call it the recurve. So we did these at 45 degree angles and we put in about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight, eight or nine. And then in between the recurves, one, two, there's one behind that one, three, four, staggered also at 45 degree angles our bridal wreath spirea because I really wanted that like light and airy effect next to some larger, more compact, visually weighty shrubs. I like that contrast. And so let me get back to y'all with the big boxwood here. Now along and underneath the river birch, we put in shishi camellias. Those are pink blooming. And we did like a whole drift from right there all the way through this area. And I need to get another one for there, but I just have not done that yet. Then you will see that we added a little hint of Miss Lemon Abelia and a little patch of five there. And then we mimicked that over here on this side and used only three of the little Miss Lemons. And I love Abelia, but specifically Miss Lemons. And I think in this bed, they give a real nice pop of color when you've got mostly greens. Um, so I, I really love that. Then, okay, what you see right here is my favorite Magnolia because if y'all remember, I took out three huge little gem magnolias that were 
approximately maybe where that little teddy bear is and then here and then here and they were really big and overgrown and they were too close and I didn't think they were all that pretty so I committed the cardinal sin in the south and I took out my magnolias which I, I didn't really care because I, they weren't making me happy and in front of them I had a really long hedge of huge camellias that extended like all the way over here to this corner. So we've taken them out gradually. And so I decided I would like to add in a magnolia, but I like the teddy bear magnolia. It's about a 20 foot tall by about 12 foot wide magnolia. But the thing I like about it is the leaf shape. It's got a rounder leaf and it's got a, I just love the brown on the back of the leaf. I don't know why. I just think that's so adorable. Then we did two banks of, let's see, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Encore Azaleas. These are the Autumn Sunburst. So they stay about two to three feet tall and they've got a little bloom that has sort of a multicolor bloom. So it's like a little pink and white bloom over here on the right side and then i took out the hollies that were in the front of my house and we planted them in a three group right there kind of in the natural area and i'm going to put three more oakland hollies up here like in this area to just sort of fill in that area too and tie these in and i'll show y'all what i did in front of my house in just a minute and then so ignore the bucket Anyway, in a long drift along this edge of the bed, we put in a grass called Emerald Goddess Liriope, and it's got a really nice leaf, and it puts out purple lavender blooms, and I think it's just really pretty along the edge of this bed. And we have to actually add a few more right here in this curve. But anyhow, then we put in three cone-shaped little cute hollies. They're called Steed Hollies, and we got them from a nursery, and they are just really adorable. And what I had told John, and I think he totally nailed it, was that, okay, I have done the cottage garden. I love cottage garden. But what I want in this landscape is something that has more mature plants and a lot of green and a lot of textural contrast and different heights and a little, little villages of certain plants and drifts of plants rather than loud colors and like over the top design. I kind of wanted it to just be like subtle and elegant. And I truly just think that that's what this is. I'm so happy with it. Y'all know how much I've worked at this house and in this landscape. I was just using a lot of the plants that I had brought back from my other house. We just, I just sort of threw things in, but then I ended up looking around and thinking like, I really don't think that I love this. And let me just say this too, being a new a nursery owner now, one of the perks is that I do have access to a lot more plants. And so I really wanted to start fresh. Um, these Francis Mason Abelia came from the other house and they look actually really good right now. And I planted them right around this pine tree. But everything else you see in here pretty much is a new new arrival, a new addition to the landscape. Now over here, we did another bank of Encore Azaleas sort of to mirror that one over there. But I used Encore Autumn Corals. And so it's a different color, but it's, a, it's in the same color family. And then there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven endless summer hydrangeas over here. 
and they're looking kind of rough simply because they were transplanted but look at that that's pretty now let's see we also put in a drift of one of my new favorite plants carissa holly it is the most adorable little holly a tight little evergreen shrub that stays in a ball and i just think it is the cutest thing and i think it adds a really really nice textural contrast against the grass and i think it's just really a formal like just super tidy plant and a cute look then behind it we did three cinnamon girl distillium the cinnamon girl is a great distillium and the new growth comes out sort of a cinnamon coppery color like that and it's just really pretty um and it's more of an upright grower versus the vintage jade now y'all remember i had to take out my eastern red bud because it was diseased and it just didn't look good well i put in a forest pansy so the forest pansy i think is going to make a really nice addition to the space and it'll be kind of an understory tree to the pines and to the river birch it gets about 20 25 maybe a little bigger tall and wide and it is deciduous and so in the spring it's gonna it'll drop its leaves in the cold weather and then in the spring it will bud out with these gorgeous pink blossoms like all over the tree and they're amazing so i'm real excited to have another red bud at my house okay so i showed y'all the hollies let me get you a better view of the drift of the hollies that we did so all right there 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 and it sort of swoops into a um arch right there okay now i want to show y'all some updates y'all may remember that when we moved in and when this house was built they lined the driveway with six Natchez crepe myrtles, which are the white crepe myrtles, which get really big, like 25 to 30 feet tall. I mean, they're huge. And so it was a, I, I think of that as sort of a formal look to line the driveway um, with, with trees. And it's definitely not bad, but the trees weren't looking there very good. They were old. And so I just had this burst of inspiration. Let's just take the trees out because we were doing so much over here in this bed that the trees started to become less and less appealing to me as I was looking at them. And I thought, I bet this would open up the side landscape over here so much and it would open up our home so much not to have these trees all lining the driveway and look what else i took out do y'all remember i'm going to give y'all a second so that you can remember if you've been watching the channel you'll remember what used to be in these two beds the big boxwoods right there and back there behind the river birch is where we moved the two big boxwood. The boxwoods are now out. I'm just going to put sod over there by the driveway. It's another huge thing that we did in the landscape since we last talked. Now, let me show you what I replaced the Oakland hollies that were in front of the house with. This is where I think being a nursery owner sort of pays off because I have access to things that I normally did not have access to i mean i could have shopped at other local nurseries and found these kind of things but i saw these at a nursery that we went to and fell in love with them they're the most beautiful japanese yu and they're called eggs because they're like in an egg shape and so i took the oakland hollies out and i put the eggs in 
And reason is I love Oakland Hollies. They are just a staple in the landscape. So I don't think you can ever go wrong with an Oakland Holly. But what was bothering me was that the Oaklands were not really the same size. They were sort of just not beautiful. And so I just think they were kind of taken away from the house and the landscape. And so when I put these in, like I knew immediately, yeah, that's the look I'm going for. John and I are gonna get together and probably do a little bit of an upgrade on the front of the house too. Anyway, I think these like add a more refined, clean, special look, you know, to the front of the house. I really do. This is an awesome shrub. And I put another one over there on the other side of the porch in front of our bathroom window where there was another Oakland Holly. Okay, y'all. So that's the update. I showed y'all the side of my driveway in the front of the house where we've done some things. I have really missed you guys and y'all been on my mind so much, but I've been so busy. Um, I hope that y'all can understand that. But um, anyway, I have missed y'all. So, I hope y'all enjoyed the update video, and I will talk to you in the next one.